hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let us sing.
We know you, you take only the worship of Christ. You don't take our own earthly worship. So please hide, it, uh, uh, hide our own, uh, own, own selves so that we can worship you with mm -hmm. all of our heart, sincerely in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, we live with our own natural life, which is simple to you. You know, you know, we make our own decision in our daily lives, which cannot be forgiven unless we die. But we apparently know that this is sin to you. No one knows that we are only committing sins doing no good deeds to you. So please, forgive us for not having the ability to do things worship you. We know it is our sin, but we have little power to fight against ourselves. With this life, with this earthly life, we do, all we do is committing sins to you. It cannot satisfy you. It cannot reveal your glory in this world. That's why we need Jesus Christ in our lives. That's why we want your life revealed in our lives. As Baptist John said, you should increase in our lives and we should decrease. Mm -hmm. Please, Lord, we'd like to reveal ourselves on the cross with you. Yes. We'd like to follow, follow the path you walked. Please, Lord, let ourselves die on the cross so that we can walk through the narrow yes. gate with you yes. because it is the only way to our salvation. Mm -hmm. Please lead us to bear our own crosses, denying ourselves. Please let your life show in our lives yes. as we not deny ourselves. All we ask you is just mercy on us. Yes. Please, Lord, the salvation is, the grace is only in you. Allow us to walk toward our own crosses. Yes. Christmas is coming. A lot of people praise you, uh, praise your coming to this world 2,000 years ago. But what matters more is your coming to me today. Please let us examine if you lead in us today. Please come to us today when we worship you with all of our hearts. Please give your life to us today so, so that today is our Christmas day. And finally, thank you for allowing us to live today. Life is in you, Lord. Just, we, uh, just as we believe that our life is in you, Lord, let us realize that our daily living is in you too. Yes, yes, All we ask you is your life in us. Thank you, Lord. Be with us today, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.
So you have to talk through me. And we want to worship you completely. We want to give you whole heart. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. I didn't expect to be a preacher in my life. <laughs> All of a sudden, I act like a preacher. <laughs> the culture bulletin, I am a speaker. <laughs> But well, I'm not, you know, officially ordained or anything. I just try to share the word of God with you. Amen. According to the Bible, Luke chapter 5, in the verse of And by the way, I was really inspired by Joe's prayer and your singing. And then the uh, Hachitami's prayer. <laughs> All of them are so impressive. I praise the Lord for your group. You are really, you really want to worship God from the bottom of your heart. I can feel it. And that's what God wants us to receive. He wants our wholehearted worship to praise His name and glorify His name through our lives throughout everyday life. Amen. So, you know, I confess to be a Christian from early days on, but I really didn't live like a Christian because I didn't spend much time with God because I had good excuse for being busy. Mm -hmm. And uh, before I go to bed, I had a Bible by my bedside and I was just I just look at the Bible and I should be reading the Bible, but I'm so tired, so I just fell asleep. So many nights I slept like that, but fortunately nowadays, I have all the time in the world to read the Bible, Amen. but still, I don't read as much as I should, I mean, what I wanted to, but I have so many other things to tend to, so many excuses, but I read the Bible every day, and I try to read it at least half an hour to an hour, but sometimes I don't read that much either. I don't have any excuse, but I have so many other things to read, and that's my excuse, but Bible is the best book. And uh, there are so many books about the Bible which are helpful for our faith, but nothing is like the Bible. And nowadays, I picked up the book from the airport, which is Jesus versus Religion. It's written by a 23-year-old college student. And I didn't finish reading it, but he found out that Jesus is better than religion. He found not much reason in religion what they profess to be a religion in the church. That they follow so many rituals and customs and follow what others do. But he said, Jesus is the only person we should follow. Not any other doctrine or people or famous evangelist or anybody, but Jesus, the Word of God. That is the most important thing in our life. Amen. And he really makes himself clear. And he's so very frank about his life. How he spent his time in college with his friends and all those things he has done. And he confesses his sins. And that he's now a 100% Christian. He's now married. And he lives a wonderful Christian life. And I really enjoy reading it. So, I mean, you come to a Methodist church, and we belong to so-called Methodist religion, but we try to follow Jesus and the Bible. And nowadays, you know, Christianity is kind of not looked upon. I mean, they don't think Christianity is such a good thing, because so many things are happening in the church. Pastors included, and all those things happen. And because we didn't follow Jesus. We followed human doctrine. And 
can you know, contaminate. So he can be a leper if he's not careful. But he was not afraid. He touched the leper. But I myself am yeah, not willing to touch the leper. I was scared. But Jesus was me. He touched the man. And he healed. He said, be clean. And immediately, immediately, the leprosy left him. The miracle happened. This still can happen with faith in God, with power of God. So God is asking us to do what we can. The, this leper, he couldn't help himself. So he came. He found Jesus and came and knelt down and asked for help. That's what he did. So we should do that also if we have any prayer request. And if we cannot help ourselves, we did everything we can, but we can't help ourselves, then we come to God and ask for help. Then He can help us. So we have to do our part first. Then He will help us. The Bible says, what is impossible with men is possible with God. So we have to do our part, then He'll do it. Like a high school student who is preparing for college examination, he just prays, asks God for help. I want to do the good job. I want to enter college. And he prays all the time and he will be studying. Then God can help him. So he has to do his part, do his best, and ask God to guide him. I think what God can help you is, after you study, you may forget. You may get confused. You don't know what's right and wrong, and you just ask God to guide you and give you wisdom to choose what is right. In that way, God can help you. But he cannot help you all the way. So you have to do your part. That's a very important thing. That's what this Bible is talking about. OK, let's read the next Verse 14. Then Jesus ordered him. Don't tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. And here also, the leper has been healed, but next step is he has to follow the tradition. He has to follow the right way. Don't tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. So he has to do, what he has to do is he has to show himself to the priest. The priest will see that he has been healed. And also he has to offer sacrifices to Moses, as Moses commanded for the cleansing. So you know, when you come to church, you give your offering to God. That's your tradition. That's what you should be doing. That's what the Bible says. When you come to worship God, give your gift. That's what the Bible says. So when you worship God, you have to give your offering, whatever, how much, whatever you can offer. That's what you have to do. But this leper was ordered by Jesus to do all these. But I don't know whether he did, did it or not. We'll read later. But he just, you know, talked about what Jesus did for him. He didn't say exactly. But to, to learn from this Bible is we have to follow the rituals. No matter what it is, if you are required to do this, you have to do that. You know, sometimes you are free because your sins are forgiven. As a Christian, you are free to do anything you want to do, not that. There is a law and order. You have to follow the example of what the ancestors has done. And then sometimes in the Old Testament and New Testament is different. It's new teaching. So it's different. So, and nowadays, we are not forced to follow the Old Testament way, what they did. They used to offer animal sacrifices to 
for their sins to be forgiven, but we don't have to do that anymore. Time has changed. Things like that we have to you know, understand, we have to learn a new way. But other than that, we have to follow. Because tradition is important. Tradition has been kept because it has been good. It helps us to be orderly, to live the right way. So when you come to church, you have to dress up. You, don't, you just don't come to church in your night pajamas. So you put on your clean clothes, best clothes to come to church. You don't have to dress up like, you know, that you are going to the party. But you have to clean yourself to be presentable and women and men together. So nowadays, people go to church with their jeans and t-shirt, but well, that's fine. But, you know, you have to show respect. When you go to worship God, you have to, you know, kind of press your clothes and look nice, look presentable and come to church. And you feel good after you do that. So, you know, in some churches, the pastors require the children to dress up when they go to church. Sometimes they dress up, you know, tie and all, all those things on special occasions. Then they behave better as children. So I think, you know, the way you dress make you behave who you are. Right? So, I mean, at the wedding, you dress up to go to the wedding, don't you? You not just casual clothes, you put on the you know, formal dress that what other people wear, go to the wedding to show your respect for the bride and groom. That's just a good way of living. If you get rid of all those customs and rituals, life is not fun. So there is a law and order to follow to a certain degree, and life is more interesting. So you have some party to go to and you plan, what am I going to wear? what people are going to wear. And then you go out and get things, and that's more fun, isn't it? I think so. So, you know, on Sunday, on Saturday, I'm excited. What am I going to wear tomorrow? <laughs> and I pick up one dress, and then what, what will go with this? And I pick up, you know, things go with it. And I, I have fun doing it. Don't you think so? Amen. So, you know, if you want to please God, life is fun. Uh, to have fun with friends, you go to birthday parties and all that. It's fun to invite people to your house. And then I, you know, I have to talk about myself, talk about the tradition and all that. After our children left, Christmas is no fun anymore. I don't have Christmas tree sometimes, I get down. But nowadays, I have a different view. You know, uh, I told you some time ago, I have a prayer group meeting that uh, six ladies gather every, every Thursday we gather for prayer meetings and we all go to different churches. Just, we just happen to form a prayer group for some reason. So six of us gather together. And then uh, this time after I came home from the States, we talked about my visit to America and all those things. And, we talk about their food and Korean food and all that. And then one of the ladies suggested, why don't we have Christmas turkey at your house? <laughs> okay, fine. So I'm going, to have, I'm going to have to cook turkey for this Christmas. And then I have to make all the rest of the food. And guess what? I have to put up Christmas tree because they are coming for Christmas dinner. So I have to put up Christmas tree and do some decoration. And then, another exciting thing is, my son is coming wow. in, in January. Because my husband is planning on going to Myanmar for their graduation exercise, the, the seminary. And then my husband asked my son to go with him. So he has to come to Korea and go to Myanmar with my husband together. They don't have the direct flight to Myanmar from the United States, so he'll come to Korea and then go to Myanmar with my husband. So he's come to visit us. So that's an exciting story. And then in February, my second daughter and her first family are coming. Because I want to tell you, my second daughter is adopting a Korean orphan. And then uh, they are coming to pick her up in, in, in from February. 
with his with her husband because they have to appear in the court mm -hmm. to take the children. So they all have to come and their children are ten and twelve years old. They have they can't take this their them out of school. I mean leave the leave them at home. So they are bringing the children to so four of them are coming and stay with us. So I'm going to have a full house in November. So I'm going to have an exciting next year. I'm, I'm happy for that. Praise the Lord. So, you know, that's not because, you know, I mean, just God is blessing me. And then, uh, you know, this a prayer group, the six ladies, they are all younger than I am. Oh, I'm a grandma in the group. <laughs> And then, <laughs> and then uh, it's fun though to be with them. But you know, they treat me like I'm an older person, but we have lots of fun together though. Uh, I'm a last child, so I, I can act like a child sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes one of them feels so free with me, they just call me my name. <laughs> said, they, I am Hyosu in Korean name. That, uh, they don't generally call me Hyosu, but she calls me Hyosu sometimes. <laughs> She's 19 years younger than I am. So I said, you call me that? So, you know, we joke, joke to each other. But she laughs about it and we have fun together. So, you know, prayer group is so much fun. It's much more fun than just regular, regular, just acquaintances and regular group. So, I think Christian group is the best group you can have. Because we can talk about anything, we have any prayer requests we can have. We can talk about husbands and children and everything. And we share and that's our prayer topic. We pray for each other. And that's so nice. You, you are able to talk about everything you have. But not everything, but you know, most of the things. So we have so much fun in that prayer group and we meet once a month, once a week, not once a month. So it's a good thing to have. And you meet every Sunday, so that's a good group to have too. But you know, six of us don't go to the same church. That's why it's nicer. So they, they don't have a chance to talk about us. They don't spread rumors. Because the people they congregate, they don't know about me. So she can talk about me as much as she wants, but they don't know who I am. <laughs> so that's a good part. <laughs> so it's just you know, one of those things. All right, let's go on. Okay. All right. The verse 15. Yet yeah, the news about him spread all the more, so that the crowds of people came to hear him and then to be healed their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. That's what's important. The news spread because you know Jesus told him not to talk about it, but the news spread anyhow. Because how can, how can he not talk about it because he was healed from leprosy? So people gather around Jesus to be healed. But Jesus needed a time alone. Even though Jesus is the Son of God, and he's an actual God himself, but he needed time alone to pray to God. So you know, it's very important to spend time alone with God. That's how you get acquainted with Jesus. That's the time you read the Bible and think about the Bible and then what you did to be faithful to Jesus. You pray to God and then you talk about what you did, what's wrong with you, and what you plan to do and all about you. Talk to God about you and get guidance from God. What can I do, Lord? This is my prayer request, and he will answer. Sometimes he will answer through the Bible. Sometimes he will answer through a quiet voice from the bottom of your heart. He will tell you what to do. Sometimes through some person. Sometimes just through listening to the Christian music. Or sometimes singing the hymns. Sometimes you, you, somehow you get the answer from God. There's a time to pray. Do you need time alone? If you are too busy all day long, you forget about God. So you need time alone and get guidance. 
And when you have spare moment, you know, my daughter, I told you about her, she memorized the whole book of <coughs> Philippians. Four chapters she memorizes it. And then she says, as she memorizes it, she gets blessed. Mm -hmm. And the, the word becomes part of her. She thinks about the Bible verse. So whenever she has time, she memorizes the verse. Then you have to follow that word. And then you don't have time to think about all other things, worries. Don't. If you begin to worry, memorize the word of God. Like, uh, I don't memorize a lot of verses, so what I do is Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy Just memorize that. Then you get peace of heart by just repeating that. The Word of God has power. Even though sometimes you don't believe it, if you keep repeating it, repeating it, it becomes part of you. And it just comes out of your mouth at the right moment. When you need faith, you just memorize the Word of God through your mouth. And then your faith will come to you and you will have peace of heart, peace of mind. That's a good way. That's why it's important to memorize the Word of God. So like, uh, the way of Christ is, you know, I talk about, uh, you know, forgiveness, uh, give, uh, give us this idea, even forgive our sins as we forgive our debtors. It means, you know, we have to forgive others before we are forgiven. That's what we have to do. So, if you want to follow Jesus, you have to forgive the unforgivable. You have to love the unlovable. That's the hardest thing to do, isn't it? It's impossible. But if you repeat it and repeat it, pray, pray for that person, then your heart will begin to change somehow. You don't feel hatred anymore. All of a sudden, you are able to forgive. All of a sudden, you begin to understand that person. It's just a miracle. You pray for that person, then you will change. The way to change that person is change yourself. That's the secret. You know, you say, that. God, I cannot stand him. He has to change. He has to, he has to you know, repent. You know, Lord, he did wrong. Just let him repent. God says, you forgive him first. Then you just say, even if you don't feel like it, you just say, I forgive him, Lord. I pray for him. I pray that he will repent of his sin. I pray for him. Just keep praying like that. And bless him, Lord. Keep doing that. Then, all of a sudden, you don't hate him anymore. And then you are able to forgive that person. That happens. You begin to understand that person. Somehow, you understand why he acts like that. You feel sorry for that person after a while. That actually happened to me. That, that person wronged me, and for a long time, I was not able to forgive. I kept saying, oh, how could he do this? How could he? I just, I just couldn't forgive it, but I kept praying and praying and praying, and finally I began to understand him, and I began to feel why he acted like that, and I began to feel sorry for himself, and what a life he has. He must be miserable by acting like that. So I began to, for, I began to forgive him. I actually began to pray for that person from the bottom of my heart. And I don't feel the grudge anymore. I don't hate him anymore. It's a miracle. So I just can't understand myself. I have changed somehow. I have changed. And it's wonderful that I don't have the grudge anymore. I am free from unforgiveness. And I usually am able to forgive because 
somehow I don't get hurt very much. I because you know I have been loved a lot in my family and then I'm, not too many people hurting me in my life, really. I'm very lucky. So not too many people hurt me. And then that person really, really hurt me. And I just couldn't forgive for a long time. But now I forgive him. And now I don't have too many enemies anymore. I don't hate anybody, really. I like everybody. Sometimes, you know, I don't like somebody sometimes, but I don't hate anybody. I'm able to pray for everybody. Isn't that very lucky? I'm very fortunate that I don't have to go and grudge on people anymore. Isn't that right? Yeah. So, you know, if you pray, that will happen to you. And, you know, if you take care of your this ill feeling and hurts and all that, you can master your life. If you, if you master yourself, if you don't become a winner, then you can do anything in the world. Nothing is impossible to you. So you are, you are right with God. You are right with everybody in the world. Then you, you are able to do what you want to do. And if you are pure in your heart, you are able to develop your talent, develop your skill, and develop your wisdom. In your nowadays, I have some kind of problem. I, before, I used to run to people and ask for help and everybody. But now, they now think. You can do it. Mm -hmm. So if I can't do it, I think. And I pray, and what can I do next? I think about it. And usually there is a way, and I can do it, and I feel so good about myself. So before I ask for help, nowadays I help myself. I think, and I try, and I have all kinds of wisdom that I never had before. In cooking too, and I say it didn't work, and I think, oh, this might work, and I try it, and it works. So you know. It's wonderful to be free, to be free from worry, free from hatred, free from, you know, insecurity. And then you should feel confident about yourself because God gives you talent. Think about it. Everybody's born with at least one talent. Sometimes good heart, that's a talent. Sometimes Hospitality, you want to give people, you want to be give gifts, that's a gift. You can develop it, you can be givers. One of my friends is a giver. She wants to give me just a little thing sometimes, a little everything. So I, I appreciate it. And she taught me how to give. So now I begin to give to her. We give information, we give little things to each other, and we have so much fun. And she is a person that I go to the movie with. Sometimes she calls me, listen, there's a good movie for the elderly people. There's a car with the wind. Do you want to go? Oh, I said, if I have time, let's see. And we go to movies together. And Gone with the Wind, that's a good movie. Have you watched it? Gone with the Wind? No? Gone with the Wind? Long time. Old-time movie. <laughs> Old-time movie. It's a uh, one century before. <laughs> Vivian Lee and Gary Cooper. Yeah, I think we saw it right Yeah, again. I saw it again. Wonderful movie. Gone with Ambition. Mission. They we have all kinds of good movies there. That's fun. So you know. Oh, oh, watch the old time movie. <laughs> Good movies. Yeah, old time. Oh, I watch many movies nowadays. <laughs> I have free time. <laughs> She's free. <laughs> you know, no children. You know. We watch only science fiction. Huh? Science fiction. Tell me. Oh, oh <laughs> my goodness. goodness. <laughs> well, I think time has passed out better. Yeah. <laughs> So I advise you to go watch a movie. 
I need a video, good videos of, uh, what's the name of it? Bucket list. Have you watched bucket list? Bucket list. Watch that. Red video. That's the things she wants to do before they die. So two elderly people who are, uh, they don't have too much time to live. So two people, they got together in the hospital. They know they are going to die in the future, not too many, too many months to go. And they do everything they wanted to do in their lifetime together. Fun movie, and it's a good movie. The bucket list. Best two act actors. I don't know their names. It's a good movie, so watch it. Be sure to watch it. I watched it. Who did I watch it? I, I watched it in America. The bucket list. Rent a movie. I rent a video. Watch at home. It's a good movie. It's a. I mean, at the end, it's a happy ending. They die at the end, but it's a good movie. And that, uh, if you have just short time to do what you want to do, think about it. So you know, if you die tomorrow, what you want to do today? So think about it and do what you really want to do. And then you know, I think my wish is what to please God, what to make him happy in my life. So I think that's a good goal too. So you know, I have too many years to live, I guess, not too many, but the most few more years maybe. But uh, you know, that's what I wanted to do. What will please the Lord most. That's what I wanted to do. So I think God will lead me in the right direction if I have the right desire. Okay, praise the Lord. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again. We gave this power to study about you. Yes, Lord. And then our desire is really to understand you better. That we heard about that Jesus died for us, for us. He loves us. Help us to feel it, Lord. Help us to confess that we love you too, as much as we love us. That's why we want to live according to your will according to your Lord. And then we want to love each other as we love us. So we can live a full life here on earth. We want to live heaven on earth by loving each other and obeying your word. Help us to do this. And we believe and we pray for this.